Hello and welcome. I am Dev Bishnoi and today we are going to learn about the memory layout of a C program and how a C program is loaded into the memory and how it is executed, right? So let me take an example. Let's say that you have a, a program file or a source file man.c that is written in a C programming language, right? And you use uh, some compiler tool chain, which you can call as compiler, assembler, and linker, and generate an executable, uh, you know, the binary file, right? And I can call that binary file as a dot out. Okay. Now, when you want to execute this program, you typically load this program into the memory. Let's say that you execute uh, dot a dot out, right? What would an operating system would do is it would load that a dot out executable binary into your RAM. While loading that binary into the RAM, it would segregate your entire binary into five different memory segments right and let's understand what those five different memory segments are right so those memory segments are the stack right the heap the uninitialized data segment which you can also call as bss right and then the initialized data segment right and the text segment okay so now let's deeply understand each of the segment, right? So let's start with the text segment. So the text segment is a segment which hold your program code, right? So it, it would hold the code that you loaded into your RAM, right? And if you look at the, the, the order of all those uh, segments, the text segments starts at the lowest memory location. And this text section is typically shared between multiple uh, processes running this program, okay? What I mean by that is that if let's say the multiple uh, processes in an operating system are running this program, then they would all share the text or the code loaded into this text section, right? So why is that is because let's say that you uh, you know multiple programs are running and they are using the same code right so it doesn't make sense for a programmer or the operating system to load that uh, the same code you know multiple locations right and this would waste a lot of you know memory as well so for that reason we load into one common text section now let's understand the data segment the data segment is this uh, in, in two parts, the initialized data segment and uninitialized data segment. So anything that you declare as an static variable or as a global variable, that would go into the data section. Now let's understand that why we have two different segments. So so whichever variable uh, that you defined it as static or global, and if you have provided an initial value to that variable, then that variable will be stored in initialized data segment. Given the initial value to the variable, right? Now let's say that you have defined an static and global or a global variable but you did not give any initial value right so that kind of a variable will be stored in uninitialized data segment or you can call it as bss initial value not provided now let's understand what is a heap right and what does it store? 
So it's a dynamically allocated memory locations and a variable or a memory or a data that you allocate dynamically would go into the heap segment, right? And that you can typically do by using some function as malloc or alloc. So these are the APIs that you use to allocate some memory from the heap segment, right? So we will take some example, uh, you know, in, in, in few minutes. Now let's understand what is a stack, right? Stack is a data segment which is used to store a local variable It also stores function arguments. And it also stores the return address. The return address is the address of an instruction in a caller function, right? from where this process should start executing once it completes the current function execution. Now, one important thing for us to note here is that stack starts at the highest memory allocated to that program or to that process, right? And it would grow dynamically towards the lower memory locations, right? Uh, on other hand, your heap would start uh, and would grow into the higher memory locations, right? Sometimes we receive a segmentation fault during a program execution. And why is that? Because sometimes we use the stack too much that it, start, it starts using some of the heap locations, right? So since I mentioned that it grows in the downward locations, so, so let's say that you have started using the stack from the start, right? And you kept using and you reached your limit. And now you are using some of the heap memory. And that is where your segmentation fault uh, you know, occurs, right? And if you have observed that your stack and your heap is not part of your executable binary file, right? Because these are dynamic things. So when your program executes, only then heap and stack comes into the picture. Now let's write a program and understand that which part of that program goes into data segment, text segment, and heap and stack. Now let's understand the memory layout with the help of a program. Let's say I'm going to write a C program. And then I'm going to write a function. So I have written a function and passed two arguments, argument one and argument two, and I will define few variables here. And let me allocate some heap memory here. So I will create a pointer. I will call DM, the dynamic memory that I allocate using alloc or malloc. Int star malloc. And then I will pass it as an argument to the malloc. So the malloc takes an argument and allocates those many number of uh, bytes, right? So here I have provided eight. That means it will return, it, it will allocate eight bytes and return the first bytes address and then assign it to the DM, right? 
and then from here I can return now let me write a few global variables int a And then let me write a main function. Now let's go through each memory allocation and see where those memory would be allocated to, right? Now let me start with the function argument, argument one and argument two. So these would be, uh, these since these are the function arguments, so these would be part of the stack, right? X is a local variable to the function, so it would also be part of so it would also be part of this stack, right? And y and z both are static variable. So those would be part of data segment. Now let's understand that z is not initialized. So it would go to uninitialized. Data segment. Right? Since z is also a static variable, but it is initialized with an external value one. So this would go into initialized data segment. As part of this line, so as part of this line, there are two memory allocation happening, right? First memory allocation happening to a local variable dm, which is a pointer to the integer. So this would find its place in a stack. Now, the, the memory it is pointing to, that is of 8 byte and is allocated in heap, right? So this memory would be part of heap. Now, this is a global variable and this is a static global variable. So both of these variable will go into the data segment. Since these are not initialized, so these would go into uninitialized data segment, okay? And these are two global variables and C is also a static global variable. So these would also be part of data segment, but these would be part of initialized data segment because they have some initial value provided by a programmer. Okay. And here the P is a local variable similar to the variable x right so this would be this would also be part of the stack right so q is not a local variable it is a static variable so this would be part of uninitialized data segment right r is also not a local variable it is also a static variable which would be allocated in initialized initialized data segment right and now this entire code that you have written right 
it would be part of the text segment. So I hope you understood the memory layout and see you next time. Thank you.